Hello, bonjour à tous. As we've seen with our third wave, the COVID-19 pandemic can change rapidly. New variants can spread even faster than before, and our health system is feeling more pressure than ever before. We've been saying for over a year, now is not the time to travel. Ce n'est pas le temps de voyager. Border restrictions can change at any time, and you can be stuck in another country. Our government continues to take unprecedented action to protect the health and safety of all Canadians by introducing measures to prevent COVID-19 and new variants of the virus from being introduced and spread in Canada. Canada currently has some of the strongest border restrictions in the world with a strict 14-day quarantine, government-approved accommodation, a ban on foreign nationals except in narrow circumstances, and pre-border test and testing after arrival. Today, due to the continued spread of variants of concern, I am announcing new rules for some international travel. In addition to the multi-layered approach on COVID-19 already in place, given the higher number of cases of COVID-19 detected in air passengers arriving in Canada from India and Pakistan, Transport Canada is issuing a notice to airmen, or NOTAM, to halt direct passenger air traffic from those countries effective 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. I am suspending all commercial and private passenger flights arriving in Canada from India and Pakistan for 30 days. Cargo flights will be allowed to ensure the continued supply of vaccines, PPE, and other essential goods. This is a temporary measure while we assess the evolving situation and determine appropriate measures going forward. In addition, Passengers who depart from India or Pakistan to Canada via an indirect route after 11.30 p.m. Eastern tonight will need to obtain a negative COVID-19 pre-departure test at their last point from departure. Since March of last year, Canada has had robust travel restrictions and border measures in place, including mandatory quarantine measures which requires travelers to quarantine or isolate for 14 days immediately upon entry to Canada, mandatory hotel stay, pre-departure test, and test upon arrival. And data show that our, gov- our measures have been working. That is why those measures remain in place. Once again, given the current situation, I would like to remind Canadians that this is not the time for non-essential travel. Notre priority est de protéger, uh, protéger la santé des Canadiens. Our government's top priority is protecting Canadians' health and safety, and our response to the COVID-19 pandemic is guided by the latest science and research. There are currently no flights from Brazil, but we will not hesitate to ban travel from other countries if the science bears that out. As we get through these challenging moments of the pandemic, let us remember that we are in this together. We must avoid the risk of falling into the trap of blaming an identifiable group for causing COVID. We've seen this with Asian Canadians. We must reject scapegoating any group. This virus is not Chinese, nor is it Indian. It affects us all. Let's stick together to get through this pandemic and our community communities and our country will be stronger for it. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. We will now send it to Minister Patty Haidu. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, As my colleague points out, COVID-19 continues to rage around the world and Canada has implemented some of the strongest measures in the world to protect against COVID-19. Though um, through many layers of testing and mandatory quarantine, travelers are supported to protect their families and their communities from the risk of importation of infection. And I think it does bear repeating. Now is not the time to travel. Now is not the time to put yourself at risk or risk getting stuck in any country as border measures can change rapidly, not just on the Canadian side, but certainly internationally. Now, for our stringent border measures, we test, screen, quarantine all incoming travelers. And this allows us to monitor data from travelers that gives us understandings of rates of infection related to travel. 
It also allows us to sequence all positive cases, and that gives our scientists the ability to monitor and study any variants of concern and interest. And this close monitoring has also allowed us to track the percent positivity of all travelers and break down data of traveler positivity based on country of origin. Now, only 1.8% of all travelers are found to be positive with COVID-19. And I will say that despite that low number, it is important that we continue to have robust measures to protect against importation as we see provinces and territories around this country struggle to protect their uh, citizens, Canadians, through the third wave. The data that we collect also uh, allows us to identify when positive case rates change in a country-specific manner. So while India accounts for 20% of recent air travel volumes to Canada, over 50% of all positive tests conducted at the border are from this country. And a similarly high level of cases compared to travel rates have also been linked to Pakistan. As a result, the government of Canada is stopping direct flights from India and Pakistan for 30 days. By eliminating direct travel from these countries, public health experts will have the time to evaluate the ongoing epidemiology of that region and to reassess the situation as this region works to reduce transmission and protect its people. I want to say that our hearts are with the citizens of India, Pakistan, indeed the whole region during these incredibly difficult times. In the meantime, we'll continue to apply stringent testing and quarantine measures for all passengers arriving in Canada, and we'll continue to be there for Canadians as we battle this virus together. The virus might change, but we do know what we need to do, what we need to do together to protect from the spread of the virus. As a high degree of Canadians continue to get sick in some communities across the country, we have to continue to take care of each other. With the current pressure on hospitals and healthcare systems, we need to reduce our contacts and avoid crowded places more than ever. And I do want to thank the incredibly hardworking healthcare workers who are bearing the burden right now of incredibly sick people in Ontario, in Quebec, in Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, indeed across the country. And please know that our hearts are with you and that all Canadians are grateful for the sacrifices that you're making to protect your fellow citizens. Let's continue to work together. There is only one way through this, and that's the hard work that Canadians are making, sacrifices that they are making, indeed, communities working together to ensure that we protect each other. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. We will now go on to Minister Dominic Leblanc. Euh, merci beaucoup, euh, Corinne. Le Canada a mis en place certaines restrictions à la frontière qui sont parmi les plus strictes au monde, notamment la quarantaine obligatoire de 14 jours, les lieux d'hébergement approuvés par le gouvernement et l'interdiction d'entrée s'appliquant aux ressortissants étrangers, sauf dans les circonstances bien précises. Nos mesures frontalières rigoureuses comprennent le dépistage, le contrôle et la mise en quarantaine des voyageurs qui arrivent au pays. Elles nous permettent de surveiller les données des voyageurs, lesquelles nous aident à comprendre les taux d'infection liés au voyage et d'établir l'ordre des cas positifs, ce qui permet à nos scientifiques de surveiller et d'étudier les variants préoccupants et d'intérêt. Étant donné la propagation soutenue de variants euh, préoccupants, j'annonce aujourd'hui de nouvelles règles qui s'appliqueront à certains voyages internationaux et qui s'ajoutent à l'approche sur divers plans déjà adoptés à l'égard de la COVID-19. En raison de la hausse de cas de COVID-19 détectée chez les passagers qui arrivent au Canada en provenance de l'Inde et du Pakistan. Transport Canada publie un avis aux aviateurs ou nos termes pour suspendre les vols de passagers partant de ces pays. À compter de ce soir, à 23h30, heure avancée de l'Est, nous suspendons tous les vols de passagers commerciaux et privés arrivant au Canada en provenance de l'Inde et du Pakistan pendant 30 jours. 
les vols de frais seront autorisés pour assurer l'approvisionnement compte tenu de vaccins, d'équipements de protection individuelle et d'autres biens essentiels. Il s'agit d'une mesure temporaire qui s'applique le temps que le gouvernement évalue l'évolution de la situation et décide des mesures supplémentaires à, à prendre. De plus, les passagers qui partiront de l'Inde ou de Pakistan pour se rendre au Canada à compter de 23h30 heure avancée de l'Est ce soir, sans effectuer de vol direct, devront obtenir un résultat négatif à un test de dépistage de la COVID-19 effectué avant le départ à leur dernier point de départ. Depuis mars 2020, le Canada a mis en place des restrictions strictes relatives au voyage et des mesures à la frontière, notamment des mesures de quarantaine obligatoire qui obligent les voyageurs à se placer en quarantaine ou en isolement pendant 14 jours dès leur entrée au Canada. Évidemment, ces mesures restent en vigueur. Encore une fois, étant donné la situation actuelle, j'aimerais rappeler aux Canadiens que ce n'est pas le moment d'effectuer des voyages pour des raisons non essentielles. La priorité absolue de notre gouvernement est de protéger la santé et la sécurité des Canadiens. Et notre réponse à la pandémie de COVID-19 est fondée sur des données, des études scientifiques les plus récentes. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. Nous allons maintenant procéder à la période de questions. À titre de rappel, nous avons les ministres Omar Al-Gabra, Dominique Leblanc, Marco Mendicino, Paddy Haidu et Bill Blair sur la ligne. We will now be taking questions. Uh, we have ministers Dominique Leblanc, Marco Mendicino, Paddy Haidu, Bill Blair um, and Omar Al-Gabra on the line. Nous allons donc passer à la première question. Opérateur, c'est à vous. Thank you. Merci. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. Appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. The first question is from, la première question est de, Lina Dib de la Presse canadienne. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Oui, bonsoir. Uh, Mr. Algebra, my first question is for you. I was wondering why 30 days, the last time you, you did something like that, it was for 17 days to suspend flights from uh, the UK. Uh, did you learn from that experience that 17 days was not enough, or where does a 30-day decision come from? Thank you for the question. Um, we, as, as we've always been, are we're guided by data and science, and looking at uh, consulting Dr. Theresa Tam and other experts assessing the situation uh, that we're seeing uh, with the numbers and uh, uh, epidemiology uh, in other parts of the, the world, we decided that we need 30 days to give us time so we can assess what next steps we need to do moving forward. So uh, it is, it is uh, and we also thought we should give certainty to travelers. So if we did it only one week or two weeks, they might assume that we were going to reenact it right away, even though we had not decided. So it's, it is important to provide some certainty. Okay, so as I understand from what you're saying, then 30 days could be extended to more than 30 days. And my question to Monsieur Leblanc, est-ce qu'on a eu des garanties de l'Inde de, de qui on attend encore, je crois, un million et demi de doses de vaccin AstraZeneca, que ces doses vont arriver même si on pose le geste qu'on pose aujourd'hui? Ben, Peut-être, moi, je pourrais euh, faire quelques commentaires, puis si Mme Haidou ou quelqu'un d'autre veut ajouter, comme vous savez, nous avons un contrat pour l'approvisionnement des vaccins de l'Inde. Euh, ma collègue, Mme Annan, travaille actuellement avec ses homologues et avec l'Institut Serum en Inde. C'est précisément pourquoi le ministre Olga Bra n'a pas euh, interdit des vols euh, en termes de transport ou en termes de l'approvisionnement des vaccins. Euh, nous allons continuer de faire tout ce qu'il faut faire pour s'assurer que les Canadiens ont accès à les vaccins. Merci. Thank you. Next question. Prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. 
The next question is from La prochaine question est de Christy Kirkup, Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. À vous la parole. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, respectfully, ministers, there has been uh, a, a big uh, cry uh, for the government to do this sooner. Um, the premiers of Ontario and Quebec wrote a letter today. There was a unanimous motion passed in the House of Commons, um, and there have been, again, calls for the step to be taken much sooner. So why now and why not? Um, why not have done it sooner? Christy, I wonder if, if, I, if I might answer. I, I would just simply remind you that earlier this week, the Prime Minister uh, advised Canadians in a, in a press conference that um, he, he, we would be taking additional measures to deal with the variants from, from hotspots around the country, and he directed his officials to work on that. I think as well, we have demonstrated right from the outset that our resolve to continue to add additional layers of protection at our borders to slow the spread of COVID. And finally, I would point out that, that, that although there has been some calls to use the NOTAM to stop direct flights, that's not the whole job. And I think it's really important to recognize that vulnerabilities exist, for example, for people who might take connecting flights. And that's why we've taken additional measures also announced today of requiring people not to transit through um, those third countries, but rather to land in those countries and, and to abide by all of their conditions for entry into those countries, obtain a test in that country prior to transiting on to, to Canada. Those are the measures that are actually effective in not just eliminating direct flights and the risk that that might represent from hotspot countries, but also by, by taking the steps that are necessary to, to ensure that we don't allow people using connecting flights uh, for example, and I'll just give you an example, if I may. If someone was leaving from, say, India, from, from Delhi, and, and they're no longer under the NOTAM going to be able to fly directly to Toronto. But what they would be able to do is, is transit, for example, through the UK. And although the UK has imposed some significant restrictions, they still allow what is sometimes referred to as airside transit. So people wouldn't have to actually land in the United Kingdom and would not have to comply with their you know, very strong restrictions and prohibitions that they put in place before transiting straight on to Canada. We've stopped that vulnerability. And that's why it was important for us to do all of the work that is necessary to, to protect Canadians and to act in the best interest of slowing down the spread of these variants coming into our country. Maybe I Merci. could add, Kirsty. Uh, Kirsty. Oh. Sorry, go Sorry. ahead, Minister. I might, I might add just a couple. Sure, thanks. I might just add a couple points to that. I'll just uh, I'll just reiterate that you know this decision is being driven on science and data, and uh, because we've been testing arrivals and uh, have been able to monitor very closely the volume of travelers and the volume of positives, it's through the data that we've been able to identify that in fact. Um, you know, there's a high degree of positive travelers, disproportionately high degree of positive travelers for. India. Now, these folks are still captured through the testing and quarantine process, but it is a significant volume. And given the epidemiological situation in India, um, it makes sense to pause travel from that region while our uh, scientists and researchers have an ability to better understand this variant of interest, to better understand uh, where the trajectory of, of the cases in that region is going. Thank you. Minister Albon, do you want to do a short summary in French? Rapidement en français? Ben, comme nous avons dit depuis le début, nous prenons des décisions qui s'imposent pour protéger les Canadiens, assurer leur sécurité et mettre en place toutes les mesures nécessaires pendant la pandémie aux frontières internationales. Et nous l'avons dit souvent, nous avons les mesures parmi les plus strictes au monde, mais vous avez vu à d'autres moments, nous avons ajouté d'autres couches de protection ajuster l'empêchement, par exemple, de vol en provenance du Royaume-Uni. À un moment donné, ce soir, c'est l'Inde et le Pakistan. Nous allons continuer euh, de regarder, basé sur l'avis, évidemment, des scientifiques euh, et des médecins, les mesures additionnelles et supplémentaires que nous pouvons prendre. Ceci est euh, le résultat euh, du travail qui a été fait il y a plusieurs jours à l'intérieur de et nous sommes en place, comme le ministre Al Gabra a annoncé, empêcher à partir d'11h30 ce soir le départ des vols vers le Canada en provenance de l'Inde et du Pakistan. Et nous allons, par exemple, avec le Brésil, 
euh, s'assurer qu'il n'y a pas le retour de vol direct aussi longtemps que ce n'est pas dans l'intérêt de la santé et la sécurité des Canadiens. Merci. Your follow-up? down on the piece about foreign nationals coming into Canada. Uh, data from the CBSA today suggested from March 22nd to the 28th of this year, there were 11,700 foreign nationals that came to Canada just that week alone. Um, why is this happening and what is going to be done to address the number of foreign nationals coming into Canada? I appreciate there's already some stipulations around travel in that regard, but Clearly, there's still high volumes of foreign nationals coming into Canada. I can take that question. The first thing I want to do is I want to we re, will reiterate that we've put in place strict measures uh, right from the outset at the border. We've told Canadians not to travel. We've reduced inbound travel by over 90 percent. And anyone that still comes in is subject to the most rigorous and effective health protocols, including pre-arrival testing, mandatory quarantining and strict enforcement once they arrive. These measures have worked, uh, and we will continue to be driven by the evidence, and that is what we have been doing at every critical stage, stage, including today, where by adding the NOTAM and additional screening, we place the health and safety of Canadians as our top priority. Merci. Thank you. And, we will take... Oh, I think someone had I, something I else to add. Say, I, I, I... If I may, I, I think to, just to provide some clarity, um, we have essentially for over a year now banned all non-essential uh, foreign travel into this country. We, we've done it by air and we've done it by land. And and so those those very strict measures are in place. But we do have, for example, American citizens who drive the trucks that deliver produce onto our grocery shelves and, and, and move essential goods and, and bring essential work into, into the country. Uh, there's also the issue of, of temporary foreign workers that, that are needed, but we've got, put very robust, rigorous measures in place to protect those workers and Canadians from, from their coming into, into the country. And, and, and so I think, it, you know, just to be very clear, we have all for over a year banned non-essential travel for foreign nationals coming into this country, but we've also done the hard work of making sure that our supply chains and essential workers are able to do their jobs. Merci. Thank you. We have about two minutes for a final question, so please uh, keep it, keep the question and the answer short. Thank you. Operateur. Thank you. Merci. The next question is from La prochaine question est de Geneviève Normand de CBC Radio Canada. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Oui, merci. Je vais faire ça vite au Pakistan. En ce moment, il y a 85 000 cas environ actifs. En Inde, 13 millions, plus de 13, mi ouais, 13 millions, pardon. Euh, en fait, je veux savoir pourquoi vous avez ciblé l'Inde et le Pakistan, parce que quand on regarde des chiffres comme au Brésil, on est à 1 million, 1,3 million de cas actifs. Alors, pourquoi le Pakistan? Pe Peut-être peut je peux commencer. Euh, premièrement, il n'y a pas présentement de vol euh, du Brésil direct vers le Canada. Alors, il n'y avait pas de vol à suspendre en provenance du Brésil. Euh, il n'y en a pas. Et comme j'ai dit, nous n'allons pas permettre euh, à des vols directs en provenance du Brésil si nous ne sommes pas confiants que c'est dans l'intérêt de la santé euh, des Canadiens. Alors, nous aurons peut-être des décisions à prendre euh, à un moment ultérieur, mais pour le moment, il n'y avait pas de vol à suspendre. Mais comme M. Blair a expliqué, nous avons aussi augmenté les mesures nécessaires pour les passagers en transit pour s'assurer que les gens ne contournent pas euh, un vol direct en allant, par exemple, à un autre euh, centre aérien pour ensuite prendre un vol envers le Canada. Et quand ce qui a trait au Pakistan, quand on regarde le nombre de personnes qui sont arrivées au Canada du Pakistan et comparer per capita le nombre d'infections à leur arrivée, c'était suffisamment inquiétant euh, pour le gouvernement de recevoir l'avis que ce sera important de suspendre aussi les vols en direct du Pakistan. Et avez-vous pas peur que les membres des communautés indiennes et pakistanaises soient stigmatisés avec cette annonce? Ben, écoutez, nous prenons les décisions nécessaires pour la protection des Canadiens. Euh, nous reconnaissons 
euh, l'importance de permettre à l'échange, que ce soit commercial euh, ou en termes d'apprivoisement. De, de, mais nous avons dit déjà depuis 13 mois que ce n'est pas le temps de voyager. Euh, les gens euh, devront éviter ces voyages, mais nous n'allons euh, pas hésiter de prendre des mesures nécessaires pour protéger la santé des Canadiens. C'est ça que nous avons toujours dit euh, et nous allons continuer. Merci. Thank you. This puts an end to today's press conference. Ceci met fait à la conférence de presse d'aujourd'hui en raison des votes dans la Chambre de communes. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us and have a lovely evening.